Hello everyone and welcome back to another astrophotography lens guide. I made one a couple years back and given the popularity of that video, I decided that another more in-depth guide was due. Today, I am introducing to you a variety of lenses for all types of camera systems that should be excellent for astro. Shooting the stars is probably the hardest task you could give a lens. Since your environment is dark, you want to collect as much light as possible and because you have a maximum working shutter speed before star trails become visible, a lens with a wide maximum aperture is really important. While there are a lot of lens options that satisfy this wide aperture requirement, not many can actually render the stars that well. Any good astro lens needs to be sharp at these wider apertures. Stars are very small, so the sharper your lens, the more details you can resolve. Astrophotography is one of the few genres of photography where sharpness should be valued quite highly. A penalty of many large aperture lenses is their high degree of aberrations. These aberrations include spherical aberration, coma, and astigmatism, which can ruin the shape of stars, and chromatic aberration, which causes stars to have purple and green fringes. A good astro lens will correct well for these detrimental qualities. Finding lenses that satisfy these requirements is harder than you think, so instead of making you scour the internet for the best buys, I decided to make this quick video to save you some time and money. Before I start, with each lens, I will be listing some of their key specifications. I also have a sort of rating system which I developed as an informal way to judge the key characteristics that matter for astro, sharpness, star deforming aberrations, and chromatic aberrations. Remember that all these lenses I will mention in this video will perform well for astrophotography, but some may do better than others, so I will try and indicate that with the rating in each category. Lenses that score a 5 are flawless in that category, a 4 represents an exceptional level, a 3 a good level, a 2 an acceptable level, and a 1 an unacceptable level. Again, don't get too caught up in this rating, it's just a quick way to judge the lens. I will also elaborate on specific qualities of a lens in an other thoughts section. I'm explaining all this now because I'm going to move fairly quickly through this video. Feel free to pause if you want to read specific information, Otherwise, I will be summarizing everything in an article on my website which will have all the information in this video, plus links to scientific and in-depth reviews, and even more lens recommendations. So, with that out of the way, let's get to my top rated lenses for astrophotography. First, I'm going to cover full frame lenses, and this is where I'm going to spend a majority of my efforts, because all these lenses could be adapted for use on smaller sensor cameras without issue. At ultra-wide angle focal lengths from 10 to 19 millimeters, there are a huge number of options for full frame cameras. If price is no option, then grab the Sigma 14mm f1.8 art lens. It is the fastest 14mm lens on the market, and while it does suffer a bit at f1.8, if you can live with those few issues, it will not disappoint. The Laowa 15mm f2.0D is another great option, but it's only available for mirrorless systems. Optically, it isn't as good as a Sigma, but it does offer nearly zero distortion, it's cheaper, and it's more portable. The Zeiss Battis 18mm f2.8 renders near perfect at f2.8, but it's hard to recommend exclusively for Astro when other lenses perform around the same at wider apertures. The Rokinon SP 14mm f2.4 and 14mm f2.8 are more budget options, but still perform very, very well. The SP or Special Performance version gets you half a stop more light gathering ability and is a hair sharper, but it is also more expensive and much heavier. If you choose to buy the f2.8 version, be aware that the old UMC model has hideous mustache distortion that is barely correctable in light. Also, with all Rokinon lenses, there is wild sample variation, so if you buy one of these lenses, make sure to do a decentering test in case you have a faulty model. The Irix 15mm f2.4 is also very good for Astro, especially for the price. There's a Firefly and a Blackstone version, but both will have the same optical formula. The Blackstone is just built with more premium materials. Some newly released niche lenses to consider are the Laowa 12mm f2.8 and Rokinon SP 10mm f3.5. As of filming this video, these are the only wide aperture lenses at these extremely wide focal lengths. The Laowa 12mm, regarded as the king of real estate in many circles, due to its minimal distortion, has proven decent for astrophotography, and the Rokinon SP 10mm f3.5, releasing just last year, shows some promise as well. For zoom options, the Tamron 15-30mm f2.8 
and Sony's 16 to 35 mm f2.8 are well suited for Astro. I have personally used both, and while primes offer better image quality with their wider maximum apertures, zoom lenses are extremely convenient. Are there any lenses to avoid in this category? Yes. I would not recommend the Sony 16 to 35 mm f4, any version of the Canon 14 mm f2.8, or the Nikon 14 to 24 mm f2.8. These lenses might be good for other types of photography, but for Astro, there are just better options. Unfortunately, I see these lenses being recommended all over, but in reality, they are just not great for stars. Now, onto the standard wide angle focal lengths of 20 mm to 35 mm, there are even more competitors. At 20 mm, the best options are the Sony 20 mm f1.8 and Tokina 20 mm f2 Firin. The Sony 20 mm f1.8 is the new kit on the block, and it is an absolutely stunning lens. But if you're on a tight budget, the Firin runs about $200 less brand new, and you can find some use for much, much less. I have used the Firin extensively, and it is a great lens, and I just picked up the Sony 20mm and let me tell you the hype is real. The images you see here were all taken with the Sony last week, and you can download the raw files on my website. The Nikon 20mm f1.8 is an amazing lens as well, which I've also owned, but anyone that tells you it is perfect wide open is just lying to you. The coma performance is just good at f1.8, and the vignetting is pretty huge. But recently, prices on this lens have dropped dramatically, and it represents a good value. At 20mm, I would not buy the Sigma 20mm f1.4 art, unless you absolutely need the extra stop of light gathering. The coma performance is just subpar compared to others. Another Sony lens, the Zeiss Lockskit 21mm f2.8, is one of the greatest lenses for the Sony lineup ever produced. It's ultra sharp, has insane micro contrast, and it's light and sturdy, but for Astro, I would only call it good. At f2.8, it is okay and you won't be disappointed, but it's very expensive. Other, faster lenses at f2.8 render stars better. That's just the bottom line. For the 24mm focal length, the obvious winner here is a Sony. I have used this lens extensively, and it is basically perfect for Astro except for some above-average vignetting. If you're not a Sony user, then I highly recommend the Rokinon 24mm f1.4 lens. Coming in at under $500, it is one of the most popular Astro lenses out there, and for good reason. If you can pick up a good copy, then you will not be disappointed with its great wide-open sharpness and low amounts of aberration. Some lenses to avoid in this category would be the Canon 24mm f1.4L, Sigma 24mm f1.4 Art, which I mentioned earlier, and the Nikon 24mm f1.4G. The coma and astigmatism in these lenses is just outrageous, and I wouldn't bother with them unless you want to stop down and shoot everything at f2.8. More budget options include the Sony 28mm f2 and 7 Artisans 28mm f1.4. The Sony lens is respected for its good sharpness and coma performance at a low price, but a relatively unknown lens, the 7 Artisans 28mm f1.4, is actually very good for Astro, even wide open. And for only $500. There haven't been too many reviews on this lens, but from the few I could find, the results are really impressive. For non-Sony users, the Sigma 28mm f1.4 art is an extremely good lens as well. One of their most impressive optics. Moving up to 35mm, I first have to recommend the Tamron 35mm f1.4. This lens has class leading resolution and aberration correction, is well made, and surprisingly is reasonably priced. I'm currently buying lenses for a huge Astro time lapse project I'm doing this summer, and this lens was the first one I grabbed, currently shipping from B&H as you watch this video. It is simply outstanding, and I can't wait to share some of the results. If for some reason you find something wrong with this lens, then the next best option is the Canon 35mm f1.4L Mark II, which I have also used, and the Sigma 35mm f1.4 Art. I have used the Sigma, and its performance for Astro is a little overhyped in my opinion, and I wasn't really satisfied with the coma correction at f1.4. Now, you may be wondering about the Sigma 35mm f1.2 Art that was just released, which is the fastest full-frame wide-angle lens currently available. That lens is really outstanding, and you will definitely see a bump in image quality at f1.2 over f1.4, but it's more than twice as much as the Tamron and noticeably heavier, so while I do plan on getting it eventually, it is not something I am personally rushing to the stores to get. Plus, at f1.2, there are some aberrations in the corners, more so than I expected, 
and the vignetting is absolutely huge. On full frame you lose nearly 4 stops of light in the extreme corners. Of course, vignetting is correctable with post-processing, but if you have to boost the extreme edges of the frame by 4 stops, you will start to see some noise, that's just a fact. Like I said though, if you just care about maximum light gathering, then this lens will be right for you. A good budget option for 35mm is the Rokinon 35mm f1.4, which offers good sharpness and coma performance at a value. You can usually find these lenses used for around $300. A lens to avoid in this segment is the Nikon 35mm f1.4G. It is completely useless for astrophotography until f2.8, and to top it off, Nikon is selling this thing for $1700. Please do not buy this lens. Before we get to 50mm, I have to mention the Sigma 40mm f1.4 art. This lens is the ultimate sleeper, and because Sigma is pumping out these art lenses at a breakneck pace, I completely forgot this one existed. This lens is about as perfect as you can get for astrophotography, maybe even better than the Tamron or the Sony 24mm. It is that good. Another lens around this focal length that is worth considering is the Tamron 45mm f1.8. It is pretty sharp, and it has pretty good coma correction, so... If you can find a good deal, it's worth checking out. Now, there are a ton of 50mm lenses that are good for astrophotography, but only a handful make my list. The Sony 50mm f1.4 planar is extremely good. It is razor sharp at f1.4 and has almost zero coma. The Sigma 50mm f1.4 art is another fantastic option that is widely used and loved by astrophotographers. The Canon RF 50mm f1.2L is probably the best 50mm lens currently available. And thankfully, at f1.2, you really don't have to put up with too much coma. If I could adapt this lens to my Sony system somehow, I definitely would. A good budget wide aperture 50mm lens is the Rokinon 50mm f1.4, and it is a really solid performer. One lens I want to spotlight is the Rokinon SP 50mm f1.2. I bought this lens and used it for nearly a month just to test out since its huge maximum aperture of f1.2 intrigued me. But for some reason on my Sony a7R2 with an adapter, I was having issues with the aperture opening up to f1.2. But when it worked, I was pretty pleased with the results. You could read my full review on my website. Now I would not buy the Nikon 50mm f1.4G nor the Canon 50mm f1.2L, the regular EF mount one. As for a standard zoom lens, the Canon 24-70 f2.8L Mark II is very, very good and has great sharpness and nearly zero coma, less than most of the prime lenses on this list. The new RF 24-70 f2 from Canon has a slightly worse performance for coma, but the f2 aperture is a trade-off I'm willing to make. The Sigma 24-70 f2.8 Art does not fare as well as the Canon, but it's still pretty solid. The Tamron 28-75 f2.8 is the worst, but again, it's still fine for Astro. Now onto lenses purely made for APS-C cameras. I always recommend Rokinon's 10mm f2.8, 12mm f2, 16mm f2, and 21mm f1.4 lenses. Rokinon lenses are traditionally revered for their high amounts of sharpness and low amounts of aberrations, and these lenses, while not absolutely the best, should be praised for being high-performance optics at a reasonable price. The best APS-C zooms are the Tokina 11-16 f2.8 and Tokina 14-20 f2. They're well-respected for Astro, and I have seen a lot of people using these. The Sigma 18-35 f1.8 is also outstanding. If you're using a Micro Four Thirds camera, then there are some good Astro options for you as well. And all the lenses here have wide maximum apertures, are very sharp wide open, and suffer from low amounts of aberrations. Here we have the Olympus M Zuiko Digital 7-14mm f2.8 ED Pro, which is a mouthful to say, but also one of the best wide-angle zoom options for Micro Four Thirds users. We also have the Rokinon 7.5mm f3.5 Fisheye, which is a truly fantastic lens with surprisingly outstanding optical quality. We also have the Panasonic 12mm f1.4 Summilux, with its impressive f1.4 maximum aperture, and lastly the Panasonic Lumix G 25mm f1.7 ASPH lens, which comes out to around 50mm on a full frame camera. So that rounds off my list of top astrophotography lenses. If you think I missed a lens in my roundup, feel free to let me know in the comments and I will check it out. Also, I have not used all these lenses myself, so 
If you have your own thoughts or maybe even own one of these lenses, feel free to leave some personal comments that may help other photographers in their purchasing decisions. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a rating, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more videos. I know that I said, and this is not scripted by the way, I know that I said I was going to upload monthly again, and uh, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, life has been super hectic for me. I just started a new job at NASA, so that's definitely taking the top priority right now, but you know, I want to get this channel back on track, and I want to keep making some quality content for you guys, so just stick with me. You know, I'll try to be as transparent as possible. And, um, you know, I just want to thank you guys all for being with me through this journey and supporting me along the way. I really appreciate it. So, um, you know, with that, thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.